Vince19 here, and welcome to episode 1 of my new series, Statistical Side Quests. In my number crunching and data analysis, I often come across statistics that, while very interesting, don't quite rise to the level of having an entire video framed around them. So while they can't be part of my channel's main quest line, they're certainly worthy of a side quest. Let's just hope we don't have too many fetch quests. Let's do it. Six hundred and sixteen. That's the number of days that it took for the mighty Atari Jaguar to have its first price cut. Atari waited nearly two years to cut the price, and once they did, they cut it by a massive 40%, from 250 down to 150. But it was just too late. There was no saving the Jag by that point. And from what I've read, they waited so long because they just couldn't afford to sell the thing any cheaper than that. Atari wasn't exactly a company that could shoulder losses on each console sold. They needed to recoup their costs, and then some. I recently bought a Jag from some guy on Craigslist. I ended up driving about two hours out of town, and he invited me in to check out his Atari collection. It's a scenario that could have gone south on me, but luckily he really did have a cool Atari collection. He said he was ditching the Jag because he just didn't consider it a real Atari product, but his loss was my gain. I dig the system, and he gave it to me cheap, complete, in box, and near mint. This thing looks like it came right off the shelf. Two point three seven million, that is. That's the number of copies that Drive Club sold on the PlayStation 4 according to various sources. It's my favorite racing game in a very long time, and 2.37 million copies sold, well, that seems like a decent number to me, but apparently it just wasn't enough for Sony. They closed the studio and it doesn't look like we'll ever get a Drive Club 2. For comparison's sake, Gran Turismo Sport has apparently sold a little over 3.5 million copies. I have a friend that tried to tell me the driving mechanics for Drive Club never really clicked with him, but I think he's got it wrong. This game is incredible. I played it for easily 100 hours and squeezed out every last drop of gameplay. 2.3 Lucky number 10. That's the tie ratio on the Nintendo GameCube, meaning that the average GameCube system owner purchased 10 games for the system. That's pretty damn high and I believe it's one of the highest of any Nintendo system to this day, maybe even of any system. Say what you might about the GameCube, but you cannot easily argue that the system owners didn't do everything they could to support it. I owned a GameCube for a brief spell of time, and I recall Eternal Darkness and Resident Evil 4, of course, as being two of the best games I'd ever played up to that point. It's a damn good system and one that holds up very well in 2019. 30.4 million dollars. That's the revenue that 3DO generated in fiscal year 1995. Seems okay, right? The problem. Trip Hawkins and company racked up 46 million in losses that fiscal year. And soon after that, the company would sell their assets and hit the bricks. To my absolute dismay, what the M2 could have been. I used to have a Gold Star 3DO, but I somewhat foolishly gave it to a friend of mine. For free. I was falling out of gaming for a bit, and I figured he'd take care of it. Well, he did, but I really regret handing it over like that. I'm still on the hunt for a good deal on a 3DO today, and if that old friend is somehow listening to this, would you consider selling it back to me? Please? 2.4 889 days. That's the effective life of the Sega Dreamcast. From the time of the console release in the US until the time of the final official game release, NHL 2K2, in February of 2002. And as you can see from this graphic, the Dreamcast just about had the shortest lifespan of any major system in history, even shorter than the Jag. So sad. Crushing, really. It has to go down as one of the biggest disappointments in gaming history. Such an amazing system that burned out way too quickly. I could go on and on about my love of the Dreamcast, but just check out some of my other videos if you want to see how I feel about the thing. I've committed far too much time to that system already. 
So that's it for this round. Come back again soon and check out the next episode of Statistical SideQuest. And here's a sneak peek of one of the stats from that next video. In this game, you play the part of a guy that falls victim to a philosophical coin toss. Hmm. Stay tuned.